Hello everybody, it's your friend Vinover again, with some more Planetarian. We last left off, thinking that it was the finale, and I was stupidly wrong. But now they're walking to his car, he apparently has a car, yeah, there's apparently still gas in this post-apocalyptic world, and I don't know what's gonna happen from now, this might be the last episode, I'm not sure, we're gonna find out. The streets are empty. Shutters encrusted with rust and bicycles standing where they had been abandoned 30 years ago were being deluged by the rain. I flipped off the safety of my flechette gun and I slowly surveyed my surroundings. It's crazy that um, uh, Reverie thinks that it's completely safe outside. She has no idea what's going on outside. She would probably greet one of those uh, those giant mech robots. Hello, Mr. Customer. And they get blown at <laughs> her ass blown to bits. There was no sign of warmongers, nor was there any sign of uh, pedestrians with their umbrellas. Nothing at all had changed since I had first arrived in the sarcophagus city. I was very strongly struck by an incongruous feeling that I was the only living being in this entire place now. It was the first time I had felt such a thing. Why, there's nobody out at all, she said as if she were musing about the exact same thing that I was. That is because of the rain. Let us go. I walked out into the street from the ca uh, the eaves, or caves, I can't tell, wearing the hood of my cloak uh, low over my eyes. As I heard the sound of the rain hitting the road, the feeling of incongruity had disappeared. At that moment, she seemed to hesitate over something. I crossed the main street without slowing down, and then concealed myself near the opposite sidewalk. Stealthy motherfuckers over here. She's probably just standing in the middle of the street, just staring at everything, and he's he's hiding in a corner all sneakily. Quickly now! And finally, she began to cry. I was right! <laughs> Reverie, you're gonna get yourself destroyed. And finally, she began to cross as well. She walked with a relaxed gait, as if she were going uh, shopping in the neighborhood. Faster! Yes, Acknowledge. She whispered over to me and smiled. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty cool to, to be completely oblivious and ignorant to everything. Ignorance is bliss. Just then, a sheet of spray spouted up. What? <laughs> she lost her balance and sprawled over in the middle of the road. Go pick her up, asshole. Go. Bracing herself with both hands, she arose in the most smooth and refined manner. Oh, she's okay. After that, she picked up the bouquet from the mud. Aw, she's all dirty now. And then she continued crossing the road as if nothing happened. What the fuck? Aw, <laughs> little cloak. Thank you for waiting. I am only going to ask you once. Are you alright? At least you ask. Yes, sir. It seems that currently my posture control subsystems has become unreliable. Oh no, she's breaking down already. However, if the imbalance is uh, small, then I can recover from it under volis volitional control. Make sure you do not fall in the first place, then. Yes, sir. I beg your pardon. It's not his fault. It's not your fault, I mean. She lightly bowed her head with complete calm. Because of my fond just now, the bouquet has been broken a little bit. I beg your pardon. I do not care. Fuck you, dude. What? You're such an asshole. Oh my god, how do you not feel terrible? Thank you very much. In any case, Mr. Customer, I am sorry to bother you, but... If you're going to insist on chattering, at least whisper. Very well, I understand. Her voice obediently shrank down to a whisper. Anyway, Mr. Customer, I am sorry to bother you, but it is very dangerous to cross the road without paying attention to the traffic signals. Let it go. There is an electrical outage right now. And more importantly, can you not walk faster? Yes, this, the pace at which I was just walking is my maximum speed. 8 kilometers per hour, huh? Yes, 8 kilometers per hour. She confirmed, pussing out, puffing out her chest proudly. Pussing? What the fuck? <laughs> Ugh. Speaking of which, there really are very few people out and about today. There's nobody out and about today. It has always been thus as late as of late. Well, certainly we have been in the middle of an economic depression. 
She said earnestly, looking out at the depressed remains of buildings that seemed to lend credence to her words. Although the last time I went out, there were so many people out and about. Yeah, well, all those people are dead, Reverie. Every single one of them. They're dead. I started putting together a plan of action. It was a little over three kilometers from here to the rift in the quarantine wall, at least as the bird flew. What the fuck does that mean? What? Uh, if she was going to continue to fall over in the middle of the road and scold me over traffic laws that had ceased to be years ago, we could probably just barely reach the rift in an hour. However, the patrolling squads of heavy hunter killer mechs made it dangerous to utilize the major roads. You better take care of her, you bitch. You son of a bitch if anything happens to her. So it would be probably it would probably be better to take a detour east and head towards the rift using the side paths. Even so, that was going to take several hours. She, she was the big problem here. Fuck you. If any one of the autonomous combat units spotted this ditz of a companion robot, <laughs> she would not be able to produce a corresponding IFF signal and would thus be targeted as an enemy mech. Oh shit. While their scanners would not detect the signature of a living organism coming from her, there was no mistake that they would pick up on her movements. All right, listen up. Hi. Game plan, motherfucker. Yes, sir. If you're going to continue following me, then do not open your mouth. And if you happen to get separated from me, then do not worry and head straight home. Yes, so you can go. No, I cannot do such a thing. Which command is that a response to? What? The latter. Taking everything into consideration, I believe that it is my mission to safely see you off, Mr. Customer. Your mission, huh? Do you want to die, Reverie? Do you want to die? Cause I can. That can happen. Okay. You, you motherfucker. You better keep her safe. <laughs> I had heard those words being spoken so many times before in the past, but I had never once met a person who had truly believed in them. And to tell you the truth, I very much enjoy going out. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, they're on a little date. Oh, Junker. Is that? Is, are you? Are you putting on a hard ass cover? But you're actually taking her on a little date with robot mechs everywhere that would destroy you. There has been many a time in the past where I have stood in the corner, uh, the street corner, and advertised our projections to all the people on the street. And that was before they were all dead, and before that there was gigantic robots that would kill anything that moves. What do you think about the planetarium? Look, I told you not to speak, if at all possible. Hi. Yes, sir. I beg your pardon. Okay, I'm gonna let him be an asshole to you, Reverie, because I want you to not to die, and you keep talking, and that's gonna get you killed, so I'm on his side for now. She allowed the next 10 seconds to pass in silence, as if she had were, if she were punishing herself for her trespasses. Fuck. I was confronted with a problem that had no solution. <laughs> Just what was I thinking of doing, taking her with me like this? You like her, bitch, that's why. It was you want to be with her forever and ever. If it was true that I could not for even a second think that it was permissible to just leave her in the planetarium that had now lost all his faculties. Whoa, I read that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> but what other choice did I have? Hers was an existence that should have ceased to be 30 years ago. Damn. Just why did I care so much about this broken robot? Yeah! He just did, he just confirmed my thoughts. Fuck yeah. Junker and Reverie forever. <coughs> <coughs> Son of a bitch, sorry. Damn it. Um, Mr. Customer, if you are not feeling well, I am fine, don't worry about it. I just love you. Yes, sir. Right, there was no time to be thinking about this kind of problem right now. I could not with my hands alone. <laughs> I need assistance, my hands can't do any everything by themselves. Ew, robot doing dirty things. Ew, no. I could not with my hands alone do anything about whether she was going to continue to exist or not. Shit. If an emergency struck, it would be better just to desert- You son of a bitch! Don't say such things. She would not be able to catch up to me either. I did not care what would become of her after- You, you just said that you ca- this guy, I, I am legitimately pissed off by this guy. Let us go. 
Yes, sir. I once again stepped out into the rain. Jesus Christ, this guy's such an ass. In the space of one hour, I felt as if I had, if I had already done a decade's worth of penance. The air had grown chilly, and the rain was continuing to fall as it always had. Although the sidewalks were also immersed, they were not so bad as so as to be unwalkable yet. It did not seem as if there were any combat units in the area, either. If I made a skillful use of the alleyways, the various roads blockades, road blockades would not be much of a problem, either. I wonder if, I, if I'll ever have one sentence that I don't mess up. Yet I still found myself in the heart of the sarcophagus city. Can someone do a counter for that? How many times I said sarcophagus? Please look at that, Mr. Customer. She said happily, twisting her entire body as she looked around. I, I love this little music. The store's vanilla cream pastry is very popular, so there's always a line for it. And sure enough, there was a fallen billboard on the side of the road that read delicious handmade cream pastries. Mmm, cream pastries. Do you want a cream pastry, Reverie? No. No such things will be said. But the line of which she spoke was nowhere to be seen. Within the span of these 30 years, the baker's skill must have fallen considerably. <laughs> or his head got blown off by a giant robot mech. It's the pieces all over the place inside the the, the shop. It's pretty, it's pretty gory. Do you like cream pastries, Mr. Customer? As I have never eaten them before, whether I like them or not is irrelevant. Oh, I see. Well, it does not seem that they are crowded right now. How about having one as a souvenir? If you like, I can prepare a discount coupon. Reverie, they're dead. They're dead, Reverie. Everyone. Everyone. There are no more cream pastries. None. There may not be a line, but there is no merchandise either. As I said this, she looked with wonder at the refrigerated case that now only had a price tag sticking on it. Oh, how unfortunate. I am sorry, but they appear to be out of stock. She said this as if nothing unfortunate had happened at all. Look, cut out the guided, cut out the guided tour. Just concentrate on walking faster. I am in a hurry. Yes, order acknowledged. However, the ground is quite wet today, so if you go too fast... And just as I said that, one of her feet got snagged on the junction between two tiles. <laughs> oh, God. She lost balance just like that, and then tumbled to the ground with a crash. Who knew robots could be so clumsy? The bouquet flew from her hands, and parts of the flowers scattered about. I swear to God, if you do something stupid, say something stupid about the bouquet again. She did not cry out, nor did she clutch any parts of her body in pain. This was almost like a silent comedy. She got up in a single smooth movement, and then picked up the fallen bouquet with a conscien... Conscientious air? Conscientious air? What the fuck is these words, man? I beg your pardon, the bouquet has been broken a little bit. I don't give a fuck. Watch. Watch. Oh god, I hate you. I do not care. Dude, what the fuck? Thank you very much. The ground has become so very muddy and slippery, so... Look, I get it. So no more of these performances. Yes, sir. Please look, Mr. Customer. As if nothing in the past couple hours had happened, she stepped up to a large fluorescent billboard. There is a bar affiliated with our department store on the fifth floor of this building. One can enjoy fresh cooked fish and various microbrewed beers here. Hearing her talk about beers and stuff like that is weird. She's like a little kid. If you would like, I can print out a discount coupon for use in the bar right now. So how about paying them a visit and relaxing? Are you coming with me in order to nurse me along, or are you just coming with me in order to give me discount coupons? Just which one of the two is it? Both, bitch. Both of them. Take those coupons and shove them up your ass. Just as I said this, she looked up at me in worry. Mr. Customer, are you in a condition where a nurse is necessary? <laughs> that is not what I meant. Now I implore you, quit it with your chatter and just walk more quickly. Yes, order acknowledged. She answered with her usual smile. Speaking of which, the discount coupons may be used as many times as you like. Whoa, I want to live in this future. Coupons for days. 
I hate when people say coupons, by the way. Don't say coupons. It's coupon. I will have nothing to do with them. If you need them, then you can use them. Thank you very much. However, I am a robot, so I cannot eat or drink anything. I am grateful for your consideration, though. It wasn't consideration. Right, right, right. Just be grateful and take them back. It was dawning on me that there was no way I could correct her uh, tendency to chatter. Not anytime soon. At least there was the fact that there was still a little chance that our sounds could be detected from any long distance, thanks to the constant pounding of the rain. I, I fucked that sentence, didn't I? Jesus Christ. But the burning problem was... Mr. Customer, I truly, truly beg your pardon. She suddenly stopped as if she had read my mind. Since, unlike a human being, her movements were never telegraphed, it was disconcerting no matter how many times I had watched her. What the fuck does telegraph mean? In that... Um, context. You need another, uh, break? Yes, sir. Currently my femoral power unit is overheating. Necessitate necessitating a cooldown period. She said ap apologetically as she st uh, stood stock still. It seemed that her movement was made possible by a network of old-style micromotors and conductive fiber meshes. The flaw in that particular design was that the fact that the entire apparatus tended to overheat quite quickly, quite rapidly, when participating in anything more than light labor. And on top of that, her cooling system was not in the best of shape either. In terms of her manufacture date, she was much older than I was, although there was probably several chronic diseases lying in wait for me fairly soon as well. Death? I truly, truly beg your pardon. I understand. You better, swear to god. I am i don't like you anymore. Not even a little bit, like I used to. Not having any other choice, I headed over to the innermost part of the eaves and sat down. She walked next to me, bent her knees, and gently sat down as well. She quietly placed the bouquet on the ground next to her. This was our fourth break already. How far have we walked now? Um, about 500 feet? Sir, we have come exactly 1,122 meters from the front door of the Flower Crest department store. Not even a mile yet. I opened the door to uh, cover. I opened the cover to my watch and took stock of the time. So our average speed is one kilometer per hour. Yes, our mean speed is approximately one kilometer per hour. And what is your top speed again? <laughs> approximately eight kilometers per hour. I see. How impressive. Ah, thank you very much. I think he was being a sarcastic asshole. I did not feel as if I could calm down unless I could somehow summon the fool who had drawn up her specification sheet and fire a few rounds into him. Why? Wow, it really is raining hard. It really is raining hard. So it is. Mr. Customer, do you like the rain? Oh god. No, I do not. Is that so? To tell you the truth, I very much like the rain. Yeah, well it doesn't melt your skin. Because you get more customers in the planetarium? Yes, that is correct. I thought as much. Think about something other than money and customers, Reverie. God, I'm a human being, I'm here. Yes, Mr. Manager once taught me that on days when the rain falls, it is possible to understand that the stars are very special things indeed. Very wise man, that Mr. Manager. I see. Oh yes, something like this happened before. A certain customer asked me, are umbrellas allowed inside the planetarium? What? I raised my waterproof cloak a little bit and unfastened the canteen from my belt. While I drank that foul-smelling water, she stopped talking and merely stared over at me. I bet she's gonna say something like, I wonder what it's like to drink water, or to drink. Um, Mr. Customer, may I ask a question? What is it? If, if it would not be too much of a bother, I would like to know more about your illness. She said with a dead serious face. So it seemed that there was no longer any way to dissuade her from thinking that I was sick. My illness, huh? I stopped, I stoppered up the canteen and gazed up at the sky. And I thought about how bad it would be to allow the downpour drops of rain to strike exposed skin. It is a very common condition, nothing really worrying about. Does he have an actual condition or not? Understood, I beg your pardon then. She said easily. 
It seemed that she had decided that it would be wiser to press no further. It struck me as funny that someone who someone whose talkativeness would wear out a saint would know that there was no certain pri that there were certain private matters that could not be broached in a conversation. Then again, in the time period in which she worked, I was probably a very valuable skill. It was a very son of a bitch. Still, to know that that was okay to talk about and what was not. Skill to oh god. In that case, what do you do for a living, Mr. Customer? Uh, try not to die. Um, kill people, run from killer uh, robots. She changed the topics as if she knew what I was thinking about. Maybe she has telepathy. I am a junker. As I wondered what the hell I was doing, I answered her and allowed myself a bitter smile. And what might and what might that be? She cocked her head in doubt as she always had in situations like these and asked again. To to put it in words that you would understand, you could call me a garbage collector. A garbage collector? That is a very important job. She she doesn't think that's an important job. She thinks it's a disgusting job and you're a lowlife. No, she probably doesn't. She probably thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Because she's nice like that. But anyway, apparently this isn't the finale. I don't know how much longer this thing is, but we'll find out, I guess. Thank you for joining me. And remember, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. I will see you guys on the next episode. Later.